On Friday, 29 May 2015, marks the Democracy Day in Nigeria. And of course, this is the first time that Nigeria is going to be transited from a ruling party to an opposition party, though. So that makes it a great one. And we were able to corner Mr. G. Kola Oseni, FCPA, and of course, a veteran politician who's of note in the Awolawa days. And of course, he's been able to grant us an interview. Uh, regarding to his views about a new political dispensation, what democracy is today now that we have the progressives at the seat of government. Uh, it's going to be an ex exclusive interview, and of course, I know you're going to get a lot from our discourse. Don't go away. We'll be right back. We are very pleased to be with you again this morning, Mr. G. Kola Oseni, FCPA of the Federal Republic of Nigeria. It's a pleasure being with you once more. Thank you very much, sir. Uh, we are going to be marking the Democracy Day in another couple of days. And of course, Nigerians have massively voted for change, uh, for a new dispensation, a new Nigeria that they ever yearn to have. What would your feelings be right now as part of the pattern of the vote? Because if you have to look at the pattern of the vote, you see the Northerners massively voting for the progressive. This, a major chunk of Southwest Nigeria voting for the progressive, and of course, just some places in the South South, if any at all, voted for the progressive. If you have to look at the voting pattern, do you think this government will represent a true Nigerian government? Yes, I have that implicit confidence in General Buari and Professor Oshibajo. Buari was part of the individuals that captioned the saying that to keep Nigeria one is a tax that must be done. That was during the Biafra War. General Buari would keep Nigeria one, regardless of the pattern of the vote. Okay, sir. Fantastic, sir. Um, we've seen. General, uh, we've seen uh, the incumbent president, uh, good luck, Ebele Jonathan, accepting defeat. Uh, it has not happened in the history of Nigeria. Uh, politicians in African history want to always dominate and stay in power. But for him to have accepted that defeat, considered that defeat, and of course called the general to congratulate him, what does that say to you? It's much ado about nothing, as Shakespeare has put it. The first questions we have to ask ourselves is, did he have a choice? Was it not glaringly clear that he was defeated at the polls? Irregardless of the machination of manipulation, there was no choice. The people spoke, and he had no choice. So I'm not going to give him any Kudos for doing that. I won't. But sir, if, if he had insisted that he would go to the tribunal and he wasn't accepting the, the, the result, uh, Nigeria would be in a chaotic situation what, right now. What type of chaotic situation? What were the patterns of the voting? How many votes did he get? How many votes did General Buari and APC got? When something is closed, that's when you can raise eyebrow. Nigerians were sick of him. The old world was sick of him. He had no choice. But the individuals that like may give him kudos, I won't. Because I've seen many elections. But we've seen, we've seen a lot of uh, the presidents of uh, West African nations had just concluded their ECOWAS summit, uh, embracing him and, of course, congratulating him for, for considering the fit, sir. Mm, well, there's something they call diplomacy. I'm not a student of diplomacy because I'm too blunt when it comes to issues like that. Well, win or lose, his former colleagues will congratulate him. They did not give him kudos. They congratulated him for standing up 
as a man to accept defeat. That's all. Okay. He has done nothing special. You've been, you've been in politics since the days of Papa Awolo. And of course, you, you are one of the advocates of Papa Awolo principle. Uh, we now have a progressive government uh, due to an amalgamation of different parties, different bed, strange bedfellows. And of course, uh, you know, led by the powerful Jagaban, uh, Abola, Achuadibola, Ahmed Tinumbu, who actually stood, who stood and of course brought everyone together and said, look, it's about time we have to fight the PDP, and he, he, he's been able to do that successfully. Uh, what should we be expecting for this new government? Sir? Uh, I will not classify them as strange bedfellows. I'll say individuals that have a commonality. You see, it will go down the memory lane. What Bola Ahmed Tinumbu Alliance Ashiwaju, or not an alliance, is Ashiwaju the title, did an attempt to do it was made in 1959. But it was sabotaged. But they are so rest in peace by Adenor Gunsoy. Charles Benson that said Action Group and NCNC should not form an alliance. So that was that. In the Second Republic, we were to go for an alliance as well because nobody won clearly. We were to go to Electoral College. I happen to be in Georgia. Just with Alaji Jakonde, we wanted to form an alliance with NPP. But it was sabotaged again by 12 2 thirds. So we lost that chance again. What uh, Bola Ahmed Tinumbu Ashwaju has done now will have been done four years earlier than this. But you see, where you are, psycho fans that were dissuading people and forming rancor between individuals. If we had done it, maybe we wouldn't have seen the justification for doing it. But now that we did it, well, we, get, we have to give them kudos. Okay. Uh, let's go through the electoral process now, sir. Uh, the use of candidates were in, in, in place in which the, the, the ruling party objected to. But irrespective, IMEX still went ahead to use the card readers. And they, they, they complained that it wasn't the right time for the card readers. People need more awareness before the card readers will be put in use. Do you think the use of card readers by IMEX was, was right on time? You see, people don't know Professor Jega. He's an incorruptible man. An astute, transparent man that cannot be threatened. They tried to cajole him. He refused being cajoled. So what else do we need? His predecessor, Justice Annie could not stand up to it in 1979. They were, they were cajoled. When they postponed the election, Nigerians were patient. What was best for the country? was what Jega did, and he needs to be commended for that. Fantastic, sir. Uh, if we have to look back now, sir, uh, during the times you played active politics back in the days, uh, you know, you, do you ever have an incident where the use of eight campaigns that was used mostly in these elections that we had, we had uh, the likes of Fire O'Shea uh, actually 
put in an advertorial campaign against uh, the, 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 the winner of the election. Of course, we've seen uh, the, 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 the media spokesperson of the ruling party saying all sorts. Of course, we saw a video documentary of one of the shiftings of APC, uh, Jagaban, uh, Bola Ahmed Tinubu. Uh, we've seen so much eight campaigns in this election, this past election. What can you make of that, of policies of the old and now? What type of eight, eight campaign? If you can expatiate on that, then I'll know how to give you the right Abusive answer. Abusive language against candidates. In what sense? In advertorial sense, in every sense of it. Personal, like what? Uh, like calling them absolutely corrupt people, thieves, and all sorts. Good. Now you are talking. Who is Fayoshi? What was his record in America? How did he live in America? Is it compatible with Ashwaju? Ashwaju is a CPA, Certified Public Accountant in America. He was a consultant to Saudi oil. He was a consultant to American Express. He was a consultant to McDonald's. He was the treasurer of mobile. Let's put down their CV and see. Okay, assuming that he stole. Assuming. I'm not saying he stole. Assuming that he stole. What did he do with the money? He used it to liberate Nigeria. Tell me that country that does not have super PAC. Go to America now. The election is in 2016. The Koch brothers are ready to give their conservative candidate up to the tune of $1 billion. Jeff Bush has been organizing dinner, $100,000 per plate. Of course, Hillary will also have his, a super PAC. The conservative one in England they don't, did they not spend money? You see, when people make campaign of calumny, campaigns that do not have substance, I just ignore them. Because it's like what Shakespeare said. It's a tale told by an idiot, full of sound and fury, but signifying nothing. So, uh, in, the, in your own days, it wasn't like that? First, in, our, in our days, during the UPN, of course, the money bags were there, but what we did was that we made the party under Alaji Jakonde and under Chief Aulo and Alaji Jakonde, we made the party the master, the, the, the party members, the master of the party. Of the active politicians. You went to your ward, you contributed money every meeting. In Lagos State, we organized dinner, 25 naira per plate, 1,000 per plate, high table, 5,000 per plate. We collected our money. There is nobody that plays money, that plays politics in any part of the world. That money is not involved. The only difference is that in most cases in developing world, people go into politics to make money. In the civilized world, people that have money go into politics to acquire power. They both go together. You can't separate them. Sir, if politics is monetized, how will people like me and so forth Nigerian diaspora people have the opportunity to come and be represented or come and have a voice in Nigerian politics. Money is not monetarized. The man that spends his money is not seeking for office. The man that spends his money is trying to put the right people, put the right peg in the right hole. So everybody is saying money is, uh, politics is monetarized. Politics is monetarized. I, I can't get it. I can't get it. I can't get it. 
I can't understand it. Should we go ahead and leave people in the in, in office that are draining the treasury of Nigeria? We are oil producing country. I came back from US 14 days ago. There's no petrol. There's no diesel. For every day we lose. We cannot quantify the revenue that is gone. And let me tell you something about General Buhari anyway. If what General Buhari wants is money, he will have been one of the richest Nigerians. From when he went into the military, he was as ST. Supply and transport, S and T, in the military. They supplied everything that the military needed. General Buari once added NNPC. My brother, the retired permanent secretary, Elijah Mui Soseni, was a petroleum engineer that worked under him. He told me that when you walked into his office, who are you to talk to him about how you play? Anki panky. Now, when you even look at his eye, you see that this man is not corruptible. The result of the PTF he gave to, to the government, what did they do with it? He was a former head of state. He never accumulated wealth. Are you going to say that Professor Oshibaju is also corruptible? Is an SAN? Is a distinguished professor? Is a pastor. I happen to know his father. His father was a deacon at St. Sivius Church, Ikene. The two of them have the fear of God. And as the saying goes, the fear of God is the beginning of wisdom. Individuals that are now talking, how did Bola Ahmed Tinumbu? get into politics. How? They never even ask. When we started the Sarumi group, we were in a clutch. We didn't have money. I went to him at mobile. I said, look, we need help. He used his own money to finance us. Was he in politics then? I've told you the, the, the road it treaded. Okay, now let's assume that he stole the money. Just an assumption. But Nigeria is free forever. And I want to sound a note of warning. The damages that has been done from 1959, I don't think Nigerians will expect that it will change in 100 days. A house that is built on a solid foundation will last. The damage is done. It has to be done gradually. We should give the government the chance. The old world is watching us. We cannot be in our haste because I know my people. I'm part of it. We are always in our haste. Oh, he's there now. What has he done? No. It will take time. But sir, uh, if you have to evaluate it, Good luck in Billy Jonathan's uh, government in the past five years or six years now. Uh, what can you make of it? Can you say, okay, he's done his best, but maybe his best was not the best for Nigerians? Or you can say, look, this is a country that has been like that because government will come and go and say, we met a rot and it's going to take time to fix it. Are we going to have the same situation now? Look, the old world is watching us. And it's high time we checked ourselves. Buku Aram did all the cool for us for two years. A month for him to leave is now saying, and I was watching a program on channels. A lady came 
I think it's Mrs. A Miss Akinji Day, whether she's Miss or Mrs., I don't know. Oh, yeah. But the the state minister for FTC, that, oh, what we were doing was going through diplomatic process with Cameroon and Chad. And that took you two years. But when it was a month for you to go, now the diplomacy worked. Who are you fooling? Huh? There's a Yoruba saying that if you are fooling me, and I cannot realize that you are fooling me, you know that you are fooling me anyway. Which is broken down in Yoruba language. And Tabanton. Tiumoponton. And Tonton. Umoponton. One day, Anna Makeria. Umbe Seni Chiwa Anna Makeria. One day, Anna Makeria. Yaseni Chiwa Anna Makeria. Yes, sir. Fantastic, sir. I love the use of language. Uh, you know, you know, you know. Nigerians don't want so much. They just want power generation, effective power generation, effective use of our meager natural resources because we are heavily dependent on petroleum. And now the prices of oil has dropped so much, and the United States are not buying our oil again. How do we move forward now that a new government is meeting? A depleted economy of, of about 60 billion US dollars, according to uh, the vice president elect. Uh, how will they be able to stand all these challenges when they come in? Because Nigerians, are, they've been for change for so long and they might not have enough time on the uh, when, when President or General Obasanjo left the office, did he leave deficit? They should ask Jonathan and his colleagues what happened to the money. Obasanjo did not leave us with deficit. But you see, God loves Nigeria so much that we have not even finished tapping our resources. The whole of Undo State is asphalt. We have not even touched it. We have to diversify. God loves us that if you take some corn, or beans, and you throw it in your backyard, once the rain falls, it will germinate. Before we discovered oil, we had pyramids in Kenu, where I grew up, of peanuts that we call groundnuts. Cocoa, Ivory Coast did not teach us how to use cocoa. Our palm oil, was taken to Malaysia, the plants. Now Malaysia is producing engine oil with the conversion of palm oil. We have brains in Nigeria that we are allowing to rot. We never give our universities grants for researchers. Nigeria will survive. I am very confident that Nigeria will survive as long as we have captains that will steer the boat and the ship in the right way. The old world knows what happened more than we Nigerians do. And I know with a cool head, with confidence in the leadership, they will rally around us. Nigeria needs more than power and good road. Nigeria, Nigerians need to live like human beings. And that is what Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will give to us. Okay, sir. Thank you, sir. Uh, you know, uh, people, we ordinarily say that left for General Muhammad Dibwari is an honest man. He's been found to be incorruptible. But the people is around themselves are people of questionable characters. So people are now saying on the street that it's going to be very difficult for him in a political dispensation to be able to enforce discipline in, in the Nigerian polity 
and of course actualize the dream. Do you believe in that? Uh, what you are trying to say is that tell me your friends, show me your friends rather, and I'll tell you who you are. They are not Buhari's friends, they're his colleagues. Buhari was a former head of state with General Diabomi, so rest in peace. We have corruptible people with them, but we was able to checkmate them. He will also checkmate them. He's a man that does not take any nonsense. He will not take it. He will rather do it right or tell you, I don't want it. How did he become the head of state? A coup was organized. Baku was killed. Nigeria stayed for 24 hours without a head of state. And everybody consensuously decided that the person to lead us is Muhammad Buhari. So there must be something good in that man. Okay, sir. Okay, sir. Now we, we've had 16 good years of democracy in Nigeria, non-stop. And of course, uh, if we have to look back and say, have we used this democracy to benefit our people? If we say, government is about the people for the people, democracy is about the people for the people, and, and we're not getting the benefits of it, then that means something is wrong with our democracy. Uh, do you think we are ripe enough? We, we had democracy, quote, even before the advent of the soldiers. We had democracy. The British people give us our independence with a democratically elected government. What you are saying is that in the Fourth Republic, that is 16 years ago, democracy was reintroduced. Yes. It will not work. And I'm using this medium to appeal to General Buhari and particularly Ashwaju that it is high time we stopped recycling. Nigeria has been recycling people. We have a population of about 160 million. Can't we have competent people except to recycle the old people? People that have served in the First Republic 1959 to 1966 are still part of the government in one way or the other. It's never done. The president of America will not re recycle the secretaries that his predecessors used. Obama is not recycling the secretaries that Clinton used. Even Bush did not recycle the secretaries that his father used. We are so gifted by talented people. Other countries tap their best and make them improve the country. We cannot continue to recycle. Some of these people we are recycling don't even know how to work anymore. They want to sit in offices like commissioners, like ministers, like chairmen, like this, and continue to thrive. Let them go out and work. Let other people come in. When I, I, I decided, I could, have been, I could have gone to Senate during SDP. I could have said I wanted to vie for governorship. But life is but a stage. As Shakespeare has put it, where actors come and go, I don't have the strength, I don't have the agility to do what I was doing between 1979 and 1983. Why don't I sit down, leave the state for my children? Sir, uh, the youth actually determine the majority of the vote in these elections. And Judging by the reports that we have, I don't think the youth will have a prominent position in this new dispensation. Who told you that? We don't know yet. You see, the head is the determinant. 
if you have a basket of oranges and take a rotten one and throw it in it, huh? it will contaminate the rest. If the leader, the head, guides you aright, you will follow the pattern. You will follow his full step. If there's someone that is corrupt himself, he cannot checkmate you when you tread in the path of corruption. You see, I'm sick and tired of all these political shenanigans. By that I mean political tricks, blackmail, name calling. Nigerians have spoken. We cannot start criticizing the people that have not taken office. Okay. The attempt that Chief Aulo made, the fight that Chief Aulo fought, that was aborted, Ashwajo Ahmed Tinubu fought it. And through the grace of God, himself and Buhari, there was a rancor between them. There are many people that did not want it to work. But I will quote something from the Bible. When the disciples went to Jesus Christ, they did not tell him, pray for us. They said, Master, teach us how to pray. And he opened his mouth and he said, Our Father, which art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come. Thy will be done on earth. God's will is what is happening to Nigeria now. Yeah. And nobody can change God's will. Sir, with your wealth of experience with, you know, in politics, I don't you think it's about time you have to train young politicians on how to do it in a very proper way? A modern way. You don't train people, you look into them, you see the path they can follow. I thank my God, I've not said this before, but I'll say it today. I saw in Tubola, I met Tenumbuna, Ashwaju, that this one will go places. What else do you have to do? Or that to say, Alhamdulillah. Alhamdulillah. Okay, Alhamdulillah. Praise be to God. Well, be Praise be to God in the highest. <laughs> I showed you as taking over from me. So, who do I want to train again? I'll sit down and fold my arms. I'm an elder statesman. I'll call myself that. I don't need anybody to tell me that. People from the southwest region of Nigeria actually determine this election, whether you like it or not. Uh, the Yoruba people actually gave the northerners that needed strength to win this election? I don't think so. I disagree with that. Why is that? Good. Yes. The, the Southwest made an attempt. The Conservatives wanted to sabotage it. But Bola Ahmed Tinumbu did not allow it. But they were able to reduce the strength of our vote. Look. Katsina, we had 1.9. The old Kanu, the old one, when you take Kanu and Jigawa, put them together. Look at the votes. Go to Maiduguri, Bonu State. Look at the votes. I don't want to under the illusion. One, Nigerians did it. You see, we are trying to divide ourselves again. By saying that it's north, it's south, it's this. The northerners went out en masse. The southerners went out en masse. I told you that Buari was part of, to keep Nigeria one, is a tax that must be done. The south-south, look at what happened in Bayasa. The population of Bayasa, what's the population of Bayasa? 
But they wrote a figure of 1 million plus, I think. I don't know. So, credit belongs to all Nigerians. You see, we are trying to introduce the vision. When we say the this, 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 this. Even in America, you have the blue state, you have the red state. Okay? That is, the conservatives and the destined. Look at the recently conducted election in Britain. I know you are very conversant with Britain, Mr. Lanry. Nobody thought the conservatives would win, but they won. How? The Scottish people rebelled. Why? Because the leader of labor that was brought out was not an acceptable person to them. That is what you call democracy. Fantastic, sir. So, so let's go back into Lagos State politics now. Yes. Uh, we've seen what emerge at the elections. Uh, we see the PDP taking a lot of advantage in Lagos, which wasn't the norm before. And uh, that's really shook the progressive this time around. Uh, what do you think determined that vote, that voting pattern? Because it was just a slim chance between the APC uh, candidate and the PDP candidate. Because they were saboteurs. I'm not going to name names. There were people, you know, I think it was March 17th that I granted an interview to PM News. And I was very emphatic that everybody must go to the primaries. I knew what I was doing. Because if they are not going into primaries, everybody can call a dog a bad name. But a dog is the most loyal animal created by God. After the dog comes the pigeon. There's a saying in Yoruba that says, the pigeon will not dine with you and on the day of death runs away. The man's best friend is a dog. But yet, some people will call it a bad name. A primary was done. Akiambodi emerged. Some people were not happy about it. If I start naming names, I'll be a partisan person. But irregardless of what happened, they did his done. To God be the glory. We never lost Lagos. And that shows you the intensity of how much work our heroes past have done for Lagos. I'll tell you something about Lagos. Lagos had never stooped to the conservatives. My parents started from area council. From area council, they went to action group. From action group, when politics came back, we went to UPN. From UPN, went to SDP. From SDP, we came to AD. From AD, we came to AC. From AC, we came to ACN. Now, APC. APC. Not the APC we used to use when we have a dick. Lagos is progressive. That is why we could take everybody. There is no country, there is no state in Nigeria that can afford to be as liberal as Lagos. An Igbo man, we took as our own man, he is, was a commissioner for the most sensitive ministry. Budget and planning, Ben Akabuizé. He's an able man. We didn't say he's an able man, he couldn't hold the position. 
Because the secret of Lagos is that equal minds will get together to get things done. Look, when Ted Kennedy passed on, there was an opening. Scott contested in Massachusetts as a senator. He later went to New Hampshire. He contested. Why can't we do that? <laughs> but, that is a, but a lot of people are saying it would be difficult for anybody incoming to pass the records of Babatu de Raji Fashola. What record does Fashola have? What record? I, do, I did not want to say this, but what record does he have? Everything, I dare anybody. Everything that any governor, after Jack Conde is doing, let them present their blueprint to me. It is, I like the Jack Conde's blueprint. The metro line, we had paid $100 million, 85 million pounds, before it was cancelled. The housing that we did during Jack Conde's regime was 6,000 naira. Any tenant was able to afford it because whatever they were paying for their rent was what they would pay. The housing, can a, can a poor man pay 16 million? They'll buy it themselves and then rent it out. If you have flurries, highways, and people are starving, what good does it do the masses? You have to employ a program that is masses oriented. Negotiants are starving. Who can surpass Jack on this record? Who? Who have done it? Let them show me their blueprint. There was a time in the 80s, I have forgotten the paper that said the only man, the only black man, that can govern, govern any civilized world was the of our law. I'm just asking that question. I want someone to convince me that everything they did was their own initiatives. Needless to say, I don't know, I don't know the facts, but I was told, I had it in U.S., they debated it in U.S., that the bridge from Osborne to Lekki is the most expensive bridge built in the world. I'm not passing any aspersion, but I think we should give credit to whom credit is due. Everything anybody is doing, any successful governor, are the brainchild of Alaji L.K. Jaconde. I was part of it from 1978 to no, 77. We wake up at 6 a.m., go around, look for spaces for school. We took those spaces, we built buildings to hold it. The UN took those buildings. That's what they are using in Mexico today. The prototype of those buildings. So they came and built on it. If the lands were, were not there for them, how could they build it? Everybody's saying, Lucky Fist 1, Lucky Fist 1, Lucky Fist 1, Lucky Fist 2. At that time, it took us from Morocco to Lucky 18 hours going, 18 hours coming. The man opened it up. The road to Ekpe had already been finished. We were just to make it four lane. The money had been paid. It was cancelled. It's yet to be completed to Ekpe. Please. Okay, sir. Thank you, sir. We appreciate you. With your wealth of experience, sir, what advice 
you are you telling me that what this what Governor Fashola did surpassed what Ahmed did? Because when Ahmed came into office, the IGR of Lagos State was five million five billion or less. By the time he was leaving, it has catapulted to twenty one billion. Is that not an achievement? That need kudos. But Ahmed laid the foundation. That that is that not an achievement that needed kudos? Answer. It is quite an achievement, sir. But he laid the foundation for Raji Fashola to build on, which he effectively did, sir. On what? Roads, infrastructure, environment. I'm telling you that all these were jack on this plan that are made follow to the letter. So what would be the way? Why will you beautify a park for 400? 500 million that people cannot sit in. Go to Walausa from the Busi Park. Who wants to go there? Are parks not for the world? Are they not for the downtrodden people? I'm not criticizing anybody, but I just don't want us to start singing empty praises. Okay, sir. What would be the way forward for Lagos? You, 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 you're a negotiant. You, you, you've lived here almost all your life. So what are the things that you want to see in Lagos? Is, is, is it's attained a mega city status now? Uh, not only has he attained the mega city, I'm not sure for if I misquote, I don't want to be held responsible to it. I'm a psychologist and politician. I've been an academician all my life, so. But from the grapevine, I was told that around 2020 or 2025, it will be the fifth largest mega city in the world. What do you do? you know, the painful thing to me is this. During Alaji Jakonde's regime, the children of the poor were given opportunity. There was free primary education. There was free secondary education. With UPN, through Papa Olo and now sat down and started lasso because the question was if you want to be a mechanic don't be an electric mechanic if you want to be a chef don't be an illiterate one illiteracy, illiteracy is a disease The children of the poor and the rich were treated equally. There was bursary. Raji Fashola used the bursary of Lagos State. How many students have been given scholarships now? Did they all choose the bursary of Lagos State? Was that bursary his own initiatives? I'm not criticizing him. He did well, but <laughs> don't 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 make him a tin god. Okay, sir. Okay, sir. We want that, sir. <laughs> <laughs> because if I criticize him, they would, it would be misconstrued. Okay. But I have my own opinion. That's your opinion, sir. Yes. Yes, that's your opinion, sir. And I have my right to it. Yeah, you do, uh, sir. If you are in the minds of General Momodi Buhari now, what are the urgent steps you would love to take? get this country back to the Committee of Nations? The, the most important thing for a nation to grow is the ability to generate power. Without power, we are finished. And 
Nobody can dictate to the man. He knows, he knows the problem. The man knows the problem. That's why he's agitating. He lost Nigeria. All, his, all the recommendations he gave for PTF were put in KIV. Keep in view. How can we be making... We have lost revenue. There's no power. People are, people are dying. Mosquitoes, all this, they are dying. The, the hospitals have no equipment. An operation may be going on and there won't be power. How many souls have we lost? I don't see why Nigeria cannot feed the world. Or even not, if it's not the world, why can't we feed Africa? We don't need fertilizers that much. It's a natural gift. There's nothing that cannot grow in Nigeria. Wheat grows in the northern part of Nigeria. There's nothing we cannot grow. Let us feed our people and give them light. Let us make sure the roads are good. We lost too many souls. You can't build infrastructures. Who are you building infrastructures for? Big, big builders. Who are you building them for? At times, I cry. The way we treat our youths, we force them to go to school from age two, three. From there, they go to primary school. From there, they go to secondary school. Then after they say, oh, he did not pass jam. Initially, we said, okay, three, three, is it not three, three? Six, three, huh? three, four. Six, three, three, four. Later, they have to take jam again. They say, oh, it did not meet the cutoff. A course that should have taken them four years, we take them six, seven years. After that, we send them to serve. Thereafter, they sit for 10 years, no job. A society that cannot make provision for its youth to be economically independent and engaged and put their own contribution into the society is a dead society. The privilege that you've given to us today, we've learned so much from a world of experience as a veteran journalist and veteran politician. We hope to see you in the near future. Thank you for giving us your time, sir. It's a pleasure, and I, I appreciate your love for Nigeria. Thank you. God bless Nigeria, and God bless Mohamed Buhari, Ashwaju, and the people that will steer us. May God, in his infinite mercy, guide them to steer Nigeria to the straight path. Thank you. Thank you. Hope you enjoy that bit of interview. This is how we wrap up this edition of the show. Keep watching Ben TV, the first ethnic satellite TV station in the UK.